Welcome to What Do You Want to Do, the show that will hopefully help you figure out what you want to do in life or reconnect you to what you love doing. Each show has a guest who is doing what they want to do, whether it's in their career or in addition to their regular job. Most importantly, we want to help you realize that no matter your age, you too can do what you want to do if you have the will to do it. Now here's your host, Leonard Kaplan. Today on What Do You Want to Do, Sean Tempesta. I haven't seen him in decades. I had him with me for a long, long time on Wrestling Talk, my wrestling talk show. And I've seen him grow from, actually, I'm not even going to say that because you started off, you were kind of like 14 years old, 15 years old. You were already fully formed as a professional. I will say that right now. You were (laughs) born to do this. The first gig I ever had in the industry was doing camera for your show. So yes. I, it's the first thing I ever did was I operated the camera for, for wrestling talk way back when. And um, yeah, that was right when I got in. I, I initially went in when I was eight years old, just kind of get an idea of what the what the station was like. And then, uh, yeah, when I was 14, I started my own show. But before that, yeah, I was working on wrestling talk, man. It's been a been a minute. And you did everything on the show. You did a little bit of set design. You directed the show. Yeah, I made had, graphics at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did graphics. Um, and I think you were you were my technical director when we did the live tribute to Tony Rumble. Yep. Remember that? Right. Mm-hmm. And you always had that aspiration to be on the air. And little did I know that you would go into radio and TV at the same time. And the first inkling that I had that you were going places when was when you interviewed Britney Spears. How the heck did you score that interview when you were a teenager? <laughs> you know, the irony is uh, I scored that interview as a teenager in a pub with a public access show. And now I'm on yeah. fully legitimate outlets and I could never do it again. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I, uh, it was uh, 1999. It was a kiss concert 20. And I had learned how to um, through somebody actually that uh, that was uh, Fred Balboni that worked through the radio mm-hmm. station uh, or through the television station. Rather, he um, taught me how to get credentials and what credentials were. And essentially, you mm-hmm. reach out to the radio station. They'll give you a media pass. And then all of a sudden you can ask for interviews. And so that year was a bananas year. I mean, Elton John was there that year and new, uh, a couple of the new kids on the block, guys. So I get Britney Spears for an interview, sit down with her for two and a half, three minutes and um yeah i was 15 and now i'm 37 and uh yeah it's a lot uh, more difficult to, to interview her i can't even believe you're 37 because that makes me decrepit <laughs> <laughs> anyway um did you always know before you were age eight did you know you wanted to go into broadcasting or anything like that uh the t- the, the first job i ever wanted was a bus driver Really? I always was I was was enamored by the way the old school MBTA buses they would open like fold open I thought that was really cool and then I used to see them <laughs> the new ones they swung open like this I'm like whoa yeah. that's crazy so I used to go around my neighborhood in the projects in Everett and I would pretend I was a bus uh, but the one thing I was infatuated <laughs> with I know I just go on my bike and I have my, my stops and everything. But the one thing I was infatuated with when I would go home um, is I would watch two things on television. I would watch uh, Seven News on uh, WHDH in, yeah. in Boston. And I would watch Double Dare with Mark yeah. Summers, who is still to this day my favorite broadcaster uh, and, and entertainer. He's just phenomenal. Great human being. Um, but I'm there and I'm sitting down when I'm six or seven and I'm watching this TV and I'm starting to grasp what jobs are. I'm starting to grasp what, oh, careers are. Mm-hmm. And I'm watching this and I'm like, he gets paid for that. Oh, I want to do that. That's what I, I would like <laughs> to do that. So, um, yeah, I knew I knew at that age. Now, uh, you know, growing up in the projects, it's quite the aspiration. I had a, a, a neighbor a couple doors down from me um, who, you know, when you're old school thinking, you know, big and aspirational like that might be kind of squashed upon. And, and I, she had asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, I want to be on air. I want to be on TV. And she said, don't you think that's aiming kind of high? Oh, wow. And at, at, and at that point, I learned something that um, Tom Brady learned uh, many, many, many moons ago to take spite 
and make it fuel for right. whatever it is. So whenever I, uh, you know, every day I'm exhausted or I'm, 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 I'm at work and I'm just like, Ugh. I always remember that. I'm like daily. I'm like, I just want to prove her wrong. <laughs> it's all I want to do is prove her wrong. So yeah, that's, that's where it started really, really young. I was fortunate. I'm going back to the bus driver thing because I can't help but think of the old joke that you're too young for. Let's see if you know this. Bus driver, bus driver, open the door. You never saw I, that visual? I never saw the joke, but I do I do suspect that has happened on more than one occasion. Yeah, yes. I used to get my book bag stuck outside the door. Yep. Squeeze on yep. the subway, actually. The subways used to have those those doors. I used to have to, I've, I had to run down the street to try to catch up with the MB. Those bus drivers, some of them, I'm convinced they will pass you and they know they've passed you and they're looking yeah. in the mirror and they're laughing hysterically as you try to full flight run and catch their bus. Um, but yeah, that was not the career for me, but who knows the way things are changing right now. I might be a bus driver still to come. Who's, who's to say? Well, uh, let's move along because this is, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? The theme of the show is to prove to people what you prove daily to that person who said you're aiming kind of high. Mm -hmm. oh, I, oh, that That's part of the reason I'm doing this show is because <laughs> to counteract people like that, you show people on this show, that's what we do, how you overcame the odds and we're not only on the air, but you're on the radio, you're on the TV, and you're even syndicated in Boston now. So you can yeah. be home and you can be where you live in Vegas at the same time. I mean, yeah. you you did it. How did it's, you do it? Uh, well, a lot of no's, a lot of uh, hard work, preparation, no's, um, uh, pride, pride crushing moments. And just learning how to uh, get past those and keep trudging along until you have your opportunity. You know, uh, in media, um, you know, what, when I wanted to get a job, you know, back before, you know, we were emailing everything or you'd just send people to your website, I would send out physical packages. And um, I would send 50 packages out. I might only hear from two places. It's a tough industry to like, right. stick out. It's a tough industry to get attention. Um, but... Yeah, I just, I don't know. So I, the, my, my trajectory was like this. So I did public access for years. I was doing it for free. I would have done it for free the whole time. I love it. Um, going to college, I get a, um, actually before that, I, I, there was an open audition for a show called Kids Talk Sports on New England Cable News. I uh, auditioned for that, get that. Uh, and for a season, I'm on that show as a news anchor um, at, when I was like 15, 16 years old, just covering sports. And a great opportunity for me. Was I fully prepared? No. Was I green? Oh, yeah. Uh, but um, it was cool. It was, a, it was a notch on my belt. Went to college. I uh, got an internship at a, a radio station in Boston uh, where a very famous um, morning show host uh, had me fired. Long story. Uh, oh, geez. <laughs> it's all right. There's a misunderstanding. Whatever the case. Um, then uh, got another internship at another place and another internship at another place and just tried to network as much as possible. Um, got part-time on air in, in central New Hampshire. I had a program director named Chris Ayaluna who heard my fake radio demo where I was just talking from one song into another and just saying, hey, here's what I'm capable of doing. And he saw enough in me and said, you know what? I'm going to give this guy a shot. Um, and he gave me that shot and I, I would drive an hour and a half north to work for $10 an hour and uh, would make just enough money to pay for the gas to get home. That was about it. Um, got another job down in, uh, in Fairhaven, Massachusetts part-time and then moved to Vegas to do part-time on air here as well as webmaster for a radio station. I was passed up three times for the night show I wanted. I had passed up another night show in Scranton to go to Vegas and didn't get it three times. And I was infuriated. I was saddened. I was heartbroken. I didn't burn the bridge though. Thank goodness, because it's such an ancestral industry that the boss I had then is now the senior vice president of programming of one of the largest, <laughs> one of the largest radio companies in the industry. So you got to be careful, but I moved back to Boston. Uh, I got part-time on air here. There was another open audition for a show in, uh, 
in Rhode Island called um, The Road Show. It was just launching, and I uh, won it. 140-some-odd people tried out. I got it, which I was beyond thrilled for. I got a year's worth of great demo material. Ended up back in Vegas. Ended up getting afternoons at the radio station that I wanted to get nights at. Got a television show here, and then just recently um, got a, got the nod to do uh, middays at Magic 106.7 in Boston. And, you know, that being my hometown, that means everything to me. That station's so... so um, it's so legendary and to have an opportunity to be on that is like, I, I I'm thanking my lucky stars every single day I get to do it. I think that the moral of the story that I'm trying to say is there was a lot of no's in between all of that. I mean, there's, you're hearing a lot of no, you're hearing a lot of, well, not right now. You're hearing a lot of silence. Um, you're hearing a lot of, well, we need you for this instead. And I, you just gotta, you, you have to overcome that stuff. Don't let other people determine your destiny you determine your destiny. If somebody says no, that's fine. You put that in your little spite fuel uh, fuel tank and you keep moving, you keep working hard. And finally you find that little crack, you get in, you prove yourself and you elevate. And that's what I've been able to do so far. And hopefully I'll be able to continue to do for years to come. I would imagine that aside from the nose, the nose are the worst things. Would you agree? <laughs> aside from oh, I, those. The no's are actually the second worst things. The silence is the worst. <laughs> so when you send a package out and you hear nothing, you're like, well, I did see. they think I sucked? Did they even get the package? I don't know. What's the problem? Um, yeah. You know, the no, at least they took the time out to say, yeah, sorry, you know, we're not interested. At least I know, okay, got that. You know, I've gotten no's from people that want to say yes to me now. So right. you just have to, you have to keep trudging along there are people that you know they weren't drafted for the nfl and then they have to go in the practice squad and they have to prove themselves same thing i just had to prove myself and and luckily the ratings have been really solid and i've, I've been able to prove that i'm I, I belong here here's what i was getting at the loneliness of being in a strange city or auditioning in a strange city and going there taking that leap of faith it has to be pretty overwhelming you know, when I, I'm a kind of a loner personally, like mm -hmm. I'm not a huge, like social butterfly. Hey, let's all go out to the bar. You know, I'm not that mm -hmm. guy. So I'm pretty much, I, I always keep good company. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm, 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 I'm happy with myself well, that's uh, cool. somewhat, not, not weight wise lately, the pandemic. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm happy with myself. So when I moved to Vegas, I mean, I was a, it was a scary prospect. I'd never been away from Boston, never been away from home. Um, was here for two years, ended up loving it. When I left, I didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. um, but coming back was a huge, huge. Um, yeah, it felt so good because I was coming back to something that I knew. Now, I mean, I've, I've had opportunities to leave the market. I've had opportunities to go to other places. I think the biggest thing now isn't necessarily the loneliness, but it's the complication. I have two kids mm -hmm. now. I have a wife now. Right. Um, and, and what's going to be okay, not just for me, but for them as well. Will it be a good situation for all of us? And I also have two incomes here with television show to radio show. So it's like, mm. you know, I have to be careful about if I were to make that leap. Um, a is going to be the right place to go and B, I mean, when you're in a market now, I've been here for 13 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, when you're market for 13 years, you create kind of a market, I want to say legacy, but people know you and sure. is leaving the market a wise thing to do. Right. Probably not. Maybe not, but who knows? And that's the, that's the one thing. It, it, a lot of people in this industry end up moving from market to market, to market, to market. And there's constantly nomads. I have not taken that approach, but, um, you right. know, whatever works for, for you. Well, they do that, I would imagine, going from smaller stations to bigger stations, no? Yeah. Uh, typically, yeah. And, and ultimately, it used to be, like, if you wanted to be a television reporter or news anchor, you would have to go to the absolute sticks, market 209. And you're literally broadcasting to more cows than people. And then you get, Hey, you get to go to the big city market 168, and then you get to go to market 121. And then you finally crack the, the 100s. And then you get, you work your way up five, six, seven stations, you get to the big station. Now it's not like that. I mean, I, I have a friend of mine that um, she, um, she started as a news anchor and reporter in Springfield, Massachusetts. She went from there to weather channel news anchor in the morning. And now she's Anna Ritas Rodriguez. She's on WBZ in Boston. Oh, that's um, right. yeah. She's phenomenal, by the way. Great human. Oh. Uh, love her. She's just so 
she's incredible, but it used to be a lot more steps. And now, especially with the way that the industry has gone, where the big anchors used to make stupid amounts of money and now they're all come in for a landing that leads to a lot of uh, managers and entering uh, end up hiring a bit younger and a bit hungrier. And so, yeah, now if you want to get into a big market, I mean, as long as you get a good tape, you can make that in one or two jumps. Now it's pretty, it's, it's, it's changed significantly. That is a big change. I didn't realize that about the big anchors, but now that you're mentioning it, you're right. We used to have Tom Ellis and they, they were like stars. And now right. Jack Williams, actually Jack Williams lives here in Las Vegas. Now he retired here. Really? Huh? What a place to retire. Wow. <laughs> Not bad. I'll tell you. Like it's popping there or something. all the time. Vegas is, is Vegas is blowing up in popularity. The no state yeah. income tax and, the weather is almost always great. I mean, we're one of the only places that weren't freezing over the past week or so. So, uh, yeah, people think of Las Vegas, they think of the Strip, but there's a lot off the Strip that is pretty decent about the area. So that's really interesting what we were just talking about with the anchors cut in pay. So if somebody wants to be an anchor and they want to make it as a lifelong career, they would have a lot further to go today than they would probably 20, 30 years ago. It was, um, yeah, 20, 30 years ago, you're making a significant amount of money, even like yeah. with the most recent uh, anchors of like Randy Price and that type. I mean, that, yeah. I, I don't want to uh, get into to numbers, but they were making pretty decent money. Yeah. And now, um, you know, there's a fragmentation when it comes to media. There used to be gatekeepers. So you wanted mm -hmm. your music to be heard. You would have to put it on the radio. And if it's not on the radio, it's like it doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. Um uh, television, you have a great idea for a show and no one will put you on air and, you know, public access is fine and all, but it's not where you want to be. You know, more people will be able to see your stuff. If you of just had a platform now you could start a Twitch channel, make millions of dollars on Twitch and do it there. If you have a political leaning or a, a thought process that you want to share with people, you start a YouTube channel, get millions of followers. You don't need an MSNBC show anymore. So we're all kind of in this digital world where it's not, um, we're not, um, there is no broadcasting anymore. Everything's niche casting. Everything's like, you know, this show right now, this is for a very small right. select group of people that are explicitly thinking about this idea. So it's not about, Hey, we need to reach 2554 people. And we're just going to throw this wide net out. That's not the way a lot of media works anymore. So with, when it comes to news, I mean, there's so many different platforms and ways to get news um that yeah it's kind of uh it's taken a pinch in the advertising budgets of some stations and and budgets have gotten a little tighter and because of that it's uh yeah it's an interesting time in the industry right now news isn't going to go away anytime soon it's just it's changing rapidly with tv and radio it just seems like you can't garner as you were saying a huge audience from one station it, every it's fragmented everything mm -hmm. is fragmented i was just trying to watch uh amazon prime they have original content there. Now I tend to watch things from my childhood, you know, gun smoke and all that stuff. I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to catch up. I want to, you know, see what's good out there, but I tried to watch something and maybe I just got to try harder. It doesn't seem like the, the stars are there. They're not building their own stars on, on Amazon prime, or I haven't seen any of the others, but, um, it, it, it just seemed the production is beautiful. Yeah. Um, high standards, but who are you watching? Everybody's anonymous. I, I feel like there game of Thrones was like that though. Game of Thrones was like that. There was no like, wow, then they got a, they got this huge star to be in game of Thrones and that an show exception. just kind of took off. Huh? It's an exception. There's an exception, sure, but I mean, there's an argument to be made about The Sopranos. Tony, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, uh, Gandolfini wasn't really a big deal until The Sopranos. So, right. I mean, I think that uh, what's cool about today, I mean, Amazon Prime, as far as the hierarchy of these these digital platforms that are out there, is probably the lesser of the three. I mean, you got Hulu, you got mm -hmm. uh, Netflix, uh, HBO Max now is a lot of them. Um, but what it, what it is given the opportunity for is just for more ideas that might have been shelved to mm -hmm. not be shelved anymore. And we're getting more and more entertain, entertainment and we're seeing that, you know, a, a show like you on Netflix, which is creepy as can be, but that might not have ever seen the light of day or mm -hmm. Cobra Kai, which is uh, a show that follows uh, 
karate kid years and years later and now the uh, johnny lawrence who you hated now is this poor sap that you kind of love and larusso who you used to love is now is kind of like ugh, he's so obnoxious uh, these might not have seen the light of day if we only had three four networks and just the cable channels that might have not seen the light of day or if it right. did the network would have had more say and sway as to how that show was made now there's so many different ways to go that if you have a good idea and one network wants to play with your idea a lot and the other one's like no listen we're going to let you do what you want to do you can just go to that network and that's uh it's cool, but then again, it's, it's tough for any one platform to have so much market share. Like, you know, it used to be right. when MASH was done. Oh, yeah. The last episode of MASH, the ratings were through the roof, and you'll sure. never see ratings like that for anything ever again. Exactly. That's what I'm getting then. And that's kind of sad. You know, you can't gather one single audience for some phenomenon that everybody will talk about the next day. It's uh, a loss, I think, but everything changes. Maybe it'll go full circle again. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. Let's talk about the morning blend because I find that show very interesting. You've had a few co-hosts in the past and you've had one for a long time now. Yeah. Um, describe like when you, you know, the producers are looking for your co-host, what are you feeling inside? Do you, do you have a, do you have any say in, in who the co-host is? Because you're going to have to get along with them and yeah. and your life is in their hands. Your career is in their hands, practically. What do you go through? Describe that. Uh, I will explain it like this. Um, I, I, with the two jobs that I've had in television, the first one was a pretty uncomfortable situation. And the second one made me feel like the first one was way better. Um, <laughs> oh, where it was just like, you know, it was to the point where I wasn't enjoying the industry anymore. And it was getting... Oh. So the, like no one there was an action that was happening within the, the the building and i'm like guys i mean for the I, you got a book this thick i mean can we do something about this it's not even an ego thing it's like well she doesn't do it my way so no it's right. just like be a decent human being um right. so when they hired my current co-host i was a little bit peeved i've been there for five years at that point i'm like i had zero say as to who gets this opportunity and um mm. And I was a little bugged by it. And then it turns out that the person that was picked is probably my soulmate. Uh, she's phenomenal. <laughs> she's my television co-host soulmate. JJ Snyder is a phenomenal, high energy, hilarious, not afraid to get dirty, um, just a, a riot. So mm -hmm. it really is a luck of the draw. You know, when it comes to being, a, whether you're a news anchor or you're a morning show host, and you're sitting down across from somebody that's already there or vice versa, or they just decided to hire two per people separately and then shove you in a room and say, okay, get along. doesn't always work that way. You know, it's, it's like, a, it's like a forced marriage really. And, and uh, it's uh, it can be uncomfortable. If it doesn't work out well, it can go uh, terribly awry, but um, I'm, I'm very fortunate for the past five years to be with JJ and uh, yeah. Just, I, I, I having, 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 yeah, having smelt, uh, the worst part of society for a while there um, to have something that's fantastic. You appreciate it so much more. So, um, and yeah, yeah another I'm, reason yeah. not to leave the, the area. Yeah. And then that's, and that's the thing. It's like, when, once you have something like that, it's like, man, oh man, leave for what? Sure. I'm, I'm the, I'm the, you know, um, I'm not even going to call myself the high school quarterback here, but I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pretty decent. I'm a fairly popular kid right now, but who am I going to be if I move to any other market? Right. It's a it's a risk, you know. I want to grow uh, uh, professionally, and that's the thing. And I'm also exhausted. I work, you know, 14, 14 15 hours a day. Um, but uh, you got to be careful because you know the grass is always greener. And then you hop over, and if it doesn't work out, you just lost some really solid, uh, really solid employment over there. Then what? So it's all it's all a big uh, juggling act. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're also somewhat technical. Uh, you know, you know, some equipment was that just a means to the end that you're doing now, or do you enjoy and miss doing some of the technical stuff? Um, you know, it's actually served me quite well. I started getting really technical because I was public access, you know, any right. person that goes through public access knows mm -hmm. you're not saying to the station manager, Hey, can you edit this for me? It just doesn't work that way. You've got to learn yeah. it. You got to do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing that, I was doing that out of necessity, uh, because no one else is going to do it for me. And it turns out that as the way the industry has gone on, like you used to, as a reporter, you would go out, you'd have a reporter and the, the photog that would go with you. And then maybe 
you know, you'd have writers that would write all the scripts and the anchor might just sit back and just give them a quick read over. Now the anchors are writing scripts. Reporters are going out with cameras on their own. And you kind of have to learn how to do everything on your own. But what I've been able to do now is kind of turn the abilities that I've created. So I, I, I know how to use After Effects and Premiere, and I did it way before it became in vogue. And I produce TV commercials for radio stations around the country now. So San Francisco and Philadelphia and Seattle, um, Orlando and, 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 and um, or not Orlando, Miami and, and Atlanta, et cetera. They've all come to me to produce television commercials and trust my trust their brand with my editing, which is huge. And then I started doing a, a Twitch uh, show that I've been doing for the past two years, especially during the pandemic. It's been a huge success and um, it looks way better than your average stream because I've learned how to fish. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're just waiting for somebody else to do it for you, it's not going to get done. But the kids that are coming up right now, they are no more than frankly, anyone like they're back when I was in high school, I was the public access nerd. They would make fun of me for having a public access show. Now every kid has their own public access show. It's a YouTube yeah. channel. It's a TikTok. their yeah. Instagram. Everyone's got one now. So yeah. it's I, what I do is not necessarily that special anymore, but as far as like my, maybe my age group, it might be special, but as far as like, you know, a 16 year old kid, they you have an eight year old opening up his you know toys on, on YouTube, making $30 million a year. Mm-hmm. Who am I? <laughs> so, yeah. So now what's become of unions? Unions used to not let people do certain things. If you were one thing, you couldn't do the other thing. And they were always watching. Is that all changed now? There are still unions. I know in Boston, there's unions. There's uh, SAG-AFTRA uh, for on air. And um, there's uh, there's unions for um, behind the scenes workers as well. You can't just touch any camera or whatever. It needs to be done by a union person. The unions still exist for them, you know, coin flip, but they can still exist in the top 10 markets or so, top 20 markets. But beyond that, like, I don't think there's any union shop here in Las Vegas as far as uh, media is concerned. Um, and, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a tough thing. Like when I was working in Boston, I was making a pretty solid, I was, I was making a, an hourly salary that was three times as much as I was making in, in Vegas. Mm-hmm. Um, for the same, you know, doing the same job, just in a slightly bigger market. Um, and the other reason I was making that is because I was in a union, but you also have to pay $2,500 worth of union dues every year. So uh. does it come out in the wash? Who's to say? Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, uh, I think there's a place for them. Honestly, I think there's a place for unionization. I just think that both parties need to realize, you know, Unions need to realize the economy that that we're working in, right? Not just right now in the pandemic, but just in general, as far as the industry. And then the companies need to realize if without having talent, they are just a jukebox that you can't skip and Spotify will destroy them. So uh, there's a place for them. I just think that I think that there's a we're in kind of a, a moment in time where, you know, 30, 40 years ago, a lot of people were in unions. And now it just seems like it's a it's a it's an exception to the rule rather than being the rule. Interesting. Now you mentioned the pandemic and I, I would be remiss if I didn't follow up on that. You mentioned earlier in our interview that, you know, you jokingly said, if I'm still here and you were referring to the pandemic, uh, what's, what has been the effect on the radio and TV industry with the pandemic and with you personally? Ah, uh, it's been, I mean, it's been challenging. I, I was one of the first people in my television station walking around saying, guys, I think this is going to be a serious situation. And everyone thought I was a Dr. Doom and I'm not typically that guy. <laughs> yeah. So like, you, you know, like when deer and like other wild animals start running for the top of a hill. Yes. I was like, you know, they're typically not acting like that. I was essentially like that. I'm like, guys, um, Italy just shut down. I'm not sure everyone noticed. This is going to come here. Um, it ended up happening. Um, You know, television was in a weird spot before this where a lot of people were on the go. They were watching stuff on their phone. They're watching YouTube and all that stuff. And I think television now, um, the the, the TV at home is being used more than it was, I think, a year or two ago. Um, Whereas radio is in an interesting spot because we, I think, rely a lot on commuting. And that commute has not really existed very much. So I think what both what both mediums need to like understand and and i've been pushing this in radio especially 
is we're not television stations anymore. We're not radio stations anymore. We're all these digital properties. So with this massive change that's taken place, rather than saying we're a radio station, we broadcast over this tower, you get it in your car, you get it on a radio, and that's the way it works. We need to be not just there, but on a smartphone and, you know, radio.com app seen behind me uh, with Entercom is how you can get our station and several others. Um, but even beyond that, like, let's do shows. And that's what I've been doing with the show that I've been doing on, on Twitch and, and Facebook called uh, Free For All. Let's take our talent and fish where the fish are. So if people are on social media, if they're on TikTok, let's be on TikTok and serve them there and remind them we exist. So maybe they'll hop off TikTok and see what else we have to offer. Um, yeah, so I, what I think the pandemic has done is it's taught us all to kind of be a little bit more nimble mm -hmm. and... Um, and realize that we kind of have to change the way that we think, you know, uh, with these morning shows, there are morning shows now that broadcast their entire morning show on Twitch, um, sports hub in Boston, they do Twitch W E I in Boston, they're on Twitch. And what is a 21 year old guy doing right now? He's not by his Sony clock radio tuning in, you know, 93.7. He is on line and he's probably on Twitch. So, fish where the fish are rather than saying we're a radio station you can do video and if you're a, a television station you can do podcasts there's no wall there anymore mm. so i think the pandemic's kind of forced us to think more creatively and and how we uh, are how we're going to move forward in the future so that's a really good thing and you personally how has it affected you i've been working in this house uh <laughs> for about a year uh you know I, my entire upstairs almost like so this is my computer room um but i have a uh you know this camera this tv over there is actually routed through this computer i have three screens in front of me here studio light studio light studio light studio light um so i do my fa my facebook live show for uh for t for radio here then outside there we have like this little um it's like an 18 by 30 foot just general bonus room and i have a projector there um and I use that now as the background for my television show on the ABC affiliate. I'm actually switching. I'm the technical director now for my television show. Wow. We take those pieces of video, we cut them, we send them out, and all the control room does is put graphics over them. And that's it. So, yeah, I, I, I've, I was a doomsday prepper for technology. <laughs> I didn't realize I, I wasn't I wasn't putting a bunch of dehydrated dehydrated beans inside my uh, my my uh, basement, but I was uh, I was ready technology wise for this thing. So, um, yeah, it's kind of it, it, I don't leave the house during the week often. <laughs> it's pretty much how it's affected me. It's crazy. It, I, I have to compliment your set because it looks like you're in a studio, looks like a radio station Thanks right about. now. But uh, so what would you say to up and coming people who want a career on the air as a technical director or anything to do with the broadcast industry. The, so my original dream was to be a game show host and I am not a game show host today. Although on my public, not my podcast, on my, on my, uh, my Facebook show, I am, I'm kind of playing game show host there. So I'm living that dream in, in a certain way. What I would say is have an idea of what, like the general place you want to be and aim towards that and know that where once you get there, it might not be what you think it is. Like, mm -hmm. you know, the way the media is changing and the way that everything is changing with the Internet and, and the pandemic and um, what is success now? What is, you know, is success being played on the radio or is success having a, your song on TikTok now? Is success having your own you know, show on NBC or a success having a Twitch with, you know, 500,000 subscribers and making it absolute bank playing video games. You know, what success is, is changing by the day. So figure out what you like, figure out what your niche is. Um, and, and just start, just start clawing away for, at it. You know, try if you want to. If you want to go to the 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 gatekeepers, like your 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 typical your news stations, your television stations, radio stations. Sure, do it. And if you aren't getting any response there, don't take that as a it's over. Take that as a all right. I've got to prove it in a different way. And frankly, if you're able to make it on your own without big media, great. <laughs> if you can make money with a YouTube channel, 
there are there's a guy that has a, a channel all he does is race matchbox cars <laughs> hundreds of thousands of views on these my kids love there is a channel where it's a dad and his two sons they play hockey on their knees with these little tiny sticks and rudimentary graphics it's cute three million views per video amazing kids are eating it up so like nickelodeon wow i mean they're getting smoked now by youtube so right. things are changing so what is success it might not be what it used to be 10 years ago right. 10 years from now god knows what success is going to be it could be holograms you know so yeah just, whatever it is just just know what you'd like to do for a living and try to aim towards it and what you thought it was today might not be what it is 10 years ago, but it might be, might even be better. Last question. Would you leave everything that you're doing? If Jimmy Fallon named you as his successor on the tonight show. It depends. It's Jay Leno uh, hovering around. <laughs> <laughs> I don't if think I'll hire him back. If Jay, if Jay Leno's just uh, waiting in the, waiting in the wings and absolutely <laughs> not. We've seen how that would go. Um, you know, <sighs> tough spot man i i would say i would say no oh, probably not no nah, i probably would jump at that opportunity but i think that even like that late night show like even the 11 o'clock news like who stays up at 11 o'clock to watch the news now hmm. no one espn no. who's waiting to watch sports center now no one that's why they're laying off people left and right. right um just the internet has disrupted everything some good some absolutely terrible it's really affected my industry and um you know i Again, what's success? Like, is success uh, is success hosting the Tonight Show and and replacing Jimmy Fallon, or is success getting to wear whatever you want, say whatever you want to say, have people eat it up on Twitch or YouTube or whatever it is, and make a great living that way? Right. What's success? You know, sure, their studio might be a little nicer, but your your way of living might be way better doing it on your own again right. it's just you got to kind of keep your keep your 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 eyes open to all the opportunities around you and success might not be what you thought it was but you can find it in different ways well thank you very much sean for this time and uh, it's great to see you again after great all these years in a minute yeah and uh if i ever get to vegas which is doubtful I'll, I'll definitely look you up <laughs> I'll get back out there. I just got my first shot. Actually, I got a I got a Pfizer vaccine out here. So once uh, we once I get that second one, come this this summer, uh, I think we'll be back in in in, in Boston for a visit and uh, long long overdue. And uh, if that's the case, we'll uh, we'll munch on some roast beef sandwiches and and chat. That depends if I get my Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> you haven't gotten yours yet. No, they they there there's a big thing in Massachusetts about teachers. <sighs> oh yeah, that's right. That's they, right. Yeah, they, which is they said, oh, that's not necessary for teachers. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. I mean, I, I I understand that the, the kids might not be able to spread it as as much, but that's not yeah. a lot of solace when you see like one school district in in Georgia uh, losing three teachers within a couple months. You know, I, I think. Uh, here in, here in Nevada, I don't think it's opened up to teachers yet either, but um, it is open to media, which is obnoxious. I'm not going to say no to it, but it, it is right. you know, open to us. Uh, I think it should absolutely be open to teachers. Anyone that's that's dealing with the public in mass right now and the people that so seniors to 65 plus and anyone that's dealing with the public. So you're a grocery store worker or you're a you're a teacher. I, I think it should I think it should be there. It's just you know, there's just not enough to go around right now. So, you know, yeah. but it should I think the teachers should be higher on the list. Because the kids well, need to learn. With me, I'm in a vocational school. I'm teaching video and still photography and podcasting. On Zoom. On Zoom. Ugh. I'm doing it both ways, in person and on Zoom. Yeah. You know? But I, when I'm in person with the kids, there's no getting around. I have to, like, show them on the computer, do this. I have to yeah. go near them with the camera to show them settings. So mm -hmm. i got to wear face shield, two masks, you know, I'm more at risk than other teachers because I can't stay six feet away from from the kids. Do I do that? And, and, and that's why I think you know. That's why I think there it, it's a it's a necessity. You know, I think um, obviously the how the pandemic was managed was uh, not managed. Uh, yes. And, and and same with the uh, with the with the vaccines. But I don't know. I'm feeling pretty bullish about the second half of this year, and hopefully we get our uh, our ship upright and we can actually open this thing up again. It'll be lovely. All right, Sean. Thank you very much. Great Good to see you. Man. And we'll be right back.